Hi, I'm Alexis. I'm the curator of this Plainfield Community Center gallery space, and right now we're in the hallway gallery, the stairwell gallery. This is a show that uh, was a project with Ethan Hubbard, um, a prominent and amazing Vermont photographer, and it was called Our Co-op is Our Community. That was Helen Rabin. All of these pictures were taken many years ago. Um, Kate Farm and Wilmer Brandt, of course, very, very wonderful forester, friend, and co-op egg producer. Ellen, forever here, an employee who now works at the Hardwick Co-op, Buffalo Mountain Co-op. Ellen Bressler, genius person. And um, Alan LePage, of course. And then this picture is a beautiful picture of, um, of Wilmer and Joey Klein from Littlewood Farm. He's still at it over there with Betsy at their farm. Um, oh, that... That's fun, <laughs> That was a cool picture that, that um, Ethan took of this giant dump truck that I still have and is still running that I drove from Pennsylvania and haul stuff, deliver food, now grow cannabis and garlic and move manure. And um, yeah, I think that was 25 years ago. <laughs> so let's go in and see the other parts of the show. This is the beginning of the possibilitarian takeover of society. We herewith dispose of the incompetent ruling class by underthrowing it from the toes up and immediately implementing the thousand alternatives to the destructive habits of capitalism. Politics must abandon its traditional war and weapons preoccupations and make the severe health issues of our one and only Mother Earth and her Earthlings its primary concern. Peter Schumann Thank <laughs> you. 
people who were um, instrumental in helping volunteering and creating the space. And um, I also would love to remember historically, before it was condemned due to the fire codes and regulations of zoning, um, the space was used back in the 70s by Bread and Puppet Theater for the weekly spaghetti dinner and the weather show with Linda Elbow and a couple of old Bread and Puppet folks who are still in the area. And um, Bread and Puppet used to be a Goddard College, so this was a sweet little venue for them to do some events. I've still been um, connected with Bread and Puppet over the years, and every year I always house um, the works of Peter Schumann, and we'll be doing a tour with the Garbage Man from Bread and Puppet Theater of Peter Schumann's Possibilitarian show, which is in the lobby gallery right now. Um, annually, Peter Schumann has a giant show in the space, and we invite Bread and Puppet Theater to perform. I've been performing with Bread and Puppet for 34 years, and um, I love working with the theater, and I love having the work in the space. Right now, this is the work of Matthew Denton, so you can move to his site on the website to um, listen to his music, hear about his hydroponics and growing, or hear a little bit more about this show. Um, there are many shows that are being posted on the website, the gallery website, which includes our filmmaker Jerome Lapani's exhibits, his many, many different documentations and participations in the many bread and puppet shows, the Leverland Dance Company, and um, his own works being I don't know how many shows we've had of his and several other artists that have shown here over the years. So please peruse the entire website and all of these collections of amazing art and community events that have happened here. And if you have 
photographs or videos or birthday parties, that send it in so that we can um, put it up on the site and just share glimpses of all the awesome things that have happened here over time. Thanks um, for supporting the community center and the co-op. And I am very excited to introduce to you um, a new artist who's moved to the area, Matthew Denton. Well, it's an honor to be here. I come from West Virginia, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Um, and uh, this is all my artwork. Um, everything you see is, uh, simply put, it's vinyl on sheet metal. Now, to break that down and I'll elaborate a little bit, um, I started a sign company about 10, 10 or 11 years ago. And so we did screen printing and we did signs. So the material you'll see on all these is um, the same material that I would use to make an outdoor, professional outdoor sign. So over the years, I accumulated a lot, a tremendous amount of scrap material. So I found a way to repurpose the scrap material on um, and make it into a, a form, an art form. So each color that you see on the artboard, each piece is an individual layer. So I have to cut each layer piece by piece, and I apply it by hand. So some of the pieces are much more complex, some are simpler. Um, but it's just a fun and creative way that I came up with to not throw the stuff away, to be able to reuse it into a fun um, artistic way to express myself. So um, there's all kinds of different subjects. Um, there's animals, there's food, there's musical instruments, there's um, iconic characters or historical figures. We've got Bernie Sanders over there, we have Jimmy Hendricks. I love color. Um, my website is mattcolorstheworld.com and you can see all these pieces and many more on my website. Um, it's also the Instagram and the Facebook are both Matt Colors the World. I do have a goal to have a piece of my artwork in every single country. That's my life goal. And mark my word, I will do it. So there's different ways that I actually start a piece of artwork. Um, sometimes I'll start with a, with a pencil drawing, sometimes I'll start with a photograph. And um, this one right here is, it's really interesting where this came from. Um, when I was bored in high school in chemistry class, I was um, sketching and I was doodling. And um, actually, I found my doodle about 10, about nine or 10 years later. So I took it and I was like, oh, well, I haven't seen that in years. So I took it and I scanned it in and I um, digitized it, vectorized it into a format which I could work with. This is uh, based off the Fibonacci sequence. Um, if you won't go into great detail, but if you take the Fibonacci sequence, and this is how I've, I've represented uh, my interpretation uh, for the Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci is uh, one, and then it's one plus one is two. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 13, 21, and it goes on and on. But this is one of my uh, representations based off of the Fibonacci sequence. If, if you actually take that number sequence and you graph it, and you put it on the graph, it's, uh, it creates a, a very unique spiral. So that spiral if you, you can be found in uh, different parts of nature. So it can be mapped and graphed, you can find it in a, um, like a hurricane, you can find it in the spiral of the galaxies. You can find it, so look at uh, certain ways that plants unfold. If you look at the center spiral of a sunflower, um, you can actually see and map, um, map that, that sequence, how it unfolds. Uh, but that's, that's about as far as I can go, go into it now, but if, it's really fascinating, it's found in nature everywhere. Well, this piece has a lot going on with it in it. Uh, I call it Summer Days, D-A-Y-Z. I had a relationship that was ending, and at one time in my life I thought I was going to marry this individual, so I put this in here. This is old people, so <laughs> you can see the couple. <laughs> um, 
I um, explored to a beautiful, beautiful place up on top of the mountain in outside Charlottesville, Virginia. And it was a place called um, at Ruckersville. And there was a koi pond. They had over 25 to 30 different koi. So this was uh, in memory of the koi. And I let my daughter help me pick some of the elements out because she's a huge part of my life. Um, she's like, Daddy, put a little kitty into it. And she even put this little gem. We were doing some arts and crafts one day. She put this little gem in front of the, the, the nose. And um, I could go on and on, but um, the elephant to me is, that's one of my spirit animals. And to, to me, an elephant is so gentle and they're so kind, but they're, they're huge. Um, and um, so this, this goes along with that. And I was doing a lot of research and uh, studying of the different chakras. And so this, this represents the, the different chakras. Um, and this, to me, right here, is an interesting little progression of, of man over, over time. But I'm spending too much time doing computer work, so I put this. This is, I don't know if you can see, but if you zoom in, you can see how man progresses um, from a more of a primitive state into a, uh, a drone state, I guess would be a good way of putting it, of just staring at the computer. So I put that just to remind me that you need to do more art, you need to do more self-expression, music, dance, theater, whatever it is to express yourself instead of just staring at a screen all day long because I became almost zombie-like. But, um, but speaking of music, um, I put this little guitar here because I always like to, to express myself through music. Um, I play the ukulele, which is my most recent instrument. I'm mostly strings. Um, I also play a banjo and I play classical guitar and some bluegrass. I also play like some gypsy jazz, Latin jazz, uh, finger picking. And um, you can listen to a lot of my music um, on my website, which is mattcolorstheworld.com. I would like to put this out there for anyone who is interested in collaborating um, on some music, whether that would be six feet away in a park or through uh, through the internet or some kind of digital format i think that would be really cool especially these days we need to create more and uh, express ourselves more than ever i think that's incredibly important for these days right now because i feel like these are some really interesting times that we're all going through and it's a beautiful time to express yourself it's a beautiful time a wonderful time to sing and dance and celebrate life and spread love and spread light. That's my final words for the day. So, thank you and uh, <laughs> have a good day. So, Alexis and I brought this piano here. It was offered to, to me by a friend who um, had a very small house and the piano was much too close to the fire and would have really destroyed this Baldwin piano, which was made during the war um, and does still need some restoration and at the moment needs retuning. Um, so that's why you're not going to hear it right now. We don't want you to have a very wrong impression of this piano, but many people in the community helped us to bring this piano in through the, the windows uh, on the side here um, a, a whole scaffolding was built, um, a, a, a truck brought it, it lifted it up, swung um, it, right swung in it the into the window, <laughs> and <laughs> we, were, we were very happy for that because it replaced a very ancient piano that had been here when I first came to Plainfield some 39 years ago. We've had and many performances where even one time Jerome was playing and we were moving the piano and we had puppetry and poetry and uh, the piano was kind of being played all around the space as it was moving around. We Jerome, do. longtime performance artist and amazing musician. And you can also donate to help us get it tuned. <laughs> 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 Thank you for all the help you can give us. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to the community here, which is full of very vibrant people, very wonderful artists. 
uh, who we have always loved and have done our best to support in every way. Oh, did you want to show them how bad it sounded out of tune? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. But you see, that note is flat. I think you can hear that even that A is not working quite. <laughs> it's tunable and, and we're glad you're tuning in. Bye now.